my kind of musical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> the 812 possesses a voice with volume but also variety. Depending on how you exercise the throttle and gear shift paddles, you can go from a mellifluous basso profundo to a wild wail with myriad tones in between. You can summon small explosions and long crescendos. You can even go up and down scales. One of the great motoring experiences has to be multiple downshifts in an 812 with this engine. So make sure in something like sort of fifth gear with enough headroom. And then as you come up to the corner, just... <laughs> the speed of them, unbelievable. This is, by the way, an 812 with gas particulate filters, but thankfully it doesn't seem to have harmed it much. The F140 GA engine is as gloriously raucous as ever. I'm not sure there's any musical instrument that takes quite so much, well, almost bravery to get the most out of, <laughs> revving it all the way out to nearly 9,000 RPM. You sort of had to steal yourself. Perhaps the cannons at the end of the 1812 overture, they, they would have taken a bit of bravery. In fact, I wonder if you could find a place for an 812 in the 1812. I'm sure Tchaikovsky would have approved. Anyway, this would seem like a good time to start talking about open air concerts and how the GTS can make your oral experience of its 6.5 litre V12 even better at the press of a button. Except, you don't want to drive it with the roof down. It's nothing to do with the looks because the buttresses are very attractive. The actual mechanism for retracting the hardtop is quite entertaining too, and it only takes 14 seconds to do its dance. It can even do this while the car is moving at up to 28 miles an hour, but I thought we'd show it static so that we can more easily point out the aerodynamic differences compared to the superfast, namely the little L-shaped lips on the top corners of the windscreen and the larger diffuser at the rear. Anyway, the reason that you don't want to drive with the roof down is because it doesn't actually sound as good. You see, whilst you still can hear the glorious 6.5 litre V12 with the roof down, and you obviously get the sunshine if there is any, you also get an awful lot of wind noise. It's not buffeting, it's perfectly comfortable with the roof down, but it's just sort of, it's like interference, like a bit of white noise over that glorious soundtrack. Much better to leave it up. Really does look good in Tour de France blue, doesn't it? Now, I realise that never putting the roof down might seem to render the GTS variant as pointless as an appendix, but it isn't, because it has another trick up its sleeve. Now you see, in fact, all you need is this little button here on the other side, which pops that bit of glass down behind me. With that little window down, you get the wonderful amplification of all the noise particularly on downshifts, but without any distraction of the wind noise. The noises from the gearbox in particular are amplified to spectacular effect with the back window down. And the nice thing is, it doesn't matter what the weather's like. If it's raining, you can still pop it down. It's a bit like sleeping with the windows open in the summertime. You still get the sensations of being outside, but unlike camping, you get a nice bed. Of course, there are times when it's nice to have the roof all the way down, tight valleys and tunnels, for example, but some of you will still be questioning whether such moments are worth the inevitable weight penalty, which comes in at an extra 120 kilos over a 1525 kilo superfast. Is it horribly detrimental to the driving experience? Not really, no. You've still got 789 brake horsepower and 530 pounds for the tour. 62 miles an hour, 2.9 seconds. And a top speed of over 211 miles an hour. For all that the engine and transmission are just stunning and probably the most memorable things about this car, I love the chassis as well. 
there's front engine, rear drive, but really mid front engines. Balance is just fantastic. The nice thing is that you don't have to be driving this really fast to feel like you're getting something out of it dynamically. Because the car is so sort of hyperactive, alert, almost sort of unstable, it just, it's exciting at any speed. Of course, when you're driving it really quickly, it's really, really exciting. But... I know not everyone's a fan of the really light steering, that sort of hyperactive front end, but it reminds me of some of the competition cars I've driven. And of course, that front end is always aided by the rear wheel steer as well. Every day, yes, it's definitely worth pressing the bumpy road button just to make your journey less ruffled. But, although arguably it deals with the bumps and everything a bit better in the UK on this sort of B road, I actually like the dampers in their firmer setting because I just like that sense of connection to the road and the car being as agile as possible. It just makes it easier to place and it still deals with the bumps. Things I don't like, I'd like to just have a bit more reach in the steering column so I can put the seat a little further back and sometimes it does trigger the hazards when you're braking. In some respects, the infotainment is also a bit lacklustre for a car costing £293,000, but you can spec Apple CarPlay, which makes life easier, albeit for £2,400. And there is no denying that the lack of big touchscreens is quite refreshing. Besides, even if you had no stereo at all, it's not as though you'd be bereft of anything to listen to. One thing that's worth mentioning is that you really do want to be in race or above on the Manatino for this. Otherwise, it's a bit like playing the piano with a soft pedal on. Or perhaps sport's more like just having one section of an orchestra playing. When you put it into race, all the other instruments wake up as well, including the percussion. <laughs> I really wasn't sure if I'd like the 812 GTS because I'm such a fan of the Superfast. And although I like an open top car, I was worried that this might be, well, obviously lesser in the dynamic states. But it really isn't. Not on the road, anyway. And just the ability to put that window down. That's all you need, though. A super fast with the ability to put the back window down somehow that's that's probably the perfect that's the absolute sweet spot but whether it's attached to a fixed roof or a folding roof it's that engine and that gearbox right there they they're the reason we have to make the case for synthetic fuels. There has to be a way to make them exist in the future. The world will just be a poorer place without them. Like somebody saying, the world could never hear Rachmaninoff's piano concerto number two ever again. It would be a travesty. Thank you very much indeed for watching. There's still more to come with this Ferrari Fortnite, so please do think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It would be hugely appreciated by us, and it's free to do so. What's more, we're trying to reach a million subscribers as soon as possible.